What's going on guys? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Unique Experience. Today I'm gonna to share with you the replacement of my Maserati Gran Turismo Liberty Walk. If you're new to the channel, my name is John and my personal goal is to own and experience as many unique cars as possible. Um, this is a car that I recently picked up uh, when I sold my Liberty Walk Maserati Gran Turismo. Um, I actually didn't even do a video of that. That is something that we still need to put together. Um, I believe the last video on the vlog is for the car that I had before that, which was the Bentley GT. But today I'm gonna share with you the car uh, that I picked up after I got rid of the Liberty Walk Gran Turismo, and it's actually this 2007 Lotus Exige S. Um, so to kind of explain to you guys how I came uh, across this car, um, I had my Liberty Walk Maserati Gran Turismo listed online for a while. Uh, didn't get, it, get any offers that I really uh, considered. Um, some low ball cash offers and trades that I wasn't really interested in. Um, I've actually owned a lot of different vehicles up to this point. So I've the more I experience, the more picky I am with what I replace it with, just because I don't wanna just get rid of the car just to get rid of it. So normally whenever I pick up a car, what I'll do is I'll get it mechanically sound, I'll button up aesthetic imperfections, and I'll make modifications along the way. So um, I wasn't expecting to sell the Gran Turismo, but uh, I decided to take it down and uh, a gentleman that bought my black Aston Vantage V8 actually reached out to me and asked if it was still available. And after a couple conversations, we ended up making a deal and he bought it sight unseen and now I'm, I was in the market to find something else. Um, pretty much what I do is whenever I sell a car, I normally have something else lined up but because I wasn't expecting to sell the car, I really wasn't sure what I was gonna replace it with. So I started looking online and I came across this Exige. So 10 years ago or so, I know my wife and I considered an Elise. We just loved the way that it looked. We didn't really know much about it, but I loved the way that it looked aesthetically. Now, as I started looking further into it, I started to realize that this is a purpose-built car. And what that means is you don't have creature features that you do in, say, a standard car. There's no power steering in these cars. Uh, AC is optional, radio is optional. Uh, it is a purpose-built car, primarily for, for track use and, you know, spirited driving. So, you know, 10 years ago, I didn't really experience a ton of cars yet, and I still wanted the car to be comfortable and have you know, just uh, all the creature features. I wanted that. So I ended up buying a V10 M6 and that was, you know, 10 years ago. So fast forward to today, I've experienced a lot more stuff. And as soon as I saw the Exige pop up, I knew I had to have it. Um, 10 years ago, obviously I liked the Exige as well, but uh, it was way out of my price range. I couldn't afford it. The Elise was more along my budget. Um, but like I said, it was, uh, too purpose built for me at the time. So once I came across this car, um, I found it in Ohio, talked to the owner, he seemed like a, a straight up guy, and um, I drove eight hours to Ohio, took a look at it, everything checked out, and I drove it back home to Maryland. So as soon as I got it back, you know, I started to go to work by starting to button up uh, the imperfections that were with the car. So. Uh, one of those things being um, the previous owner had put self-tapping screws through the shift boot into the center console. And I think the reason why he did that is because uh, the retaining clip at the bottom of the boot had broken. So it was just kind of floating around and he just kind of wanted to, I guess, secure it to some degree. Um, so what I did was I, and also the center console, you know, where he put the self tappers through, started cracking along the side. So I reached out to Lotus and as you know, they, they don't make these cars anymore. So I inquired about getting a center console and he said that they're not available. So I got on the Lotus page and thankfully somebody had a gray one and uh, I went ahead and bought it from them. Um, also when I got the car, the front lip and the rear wing 
were different finishes. So the front lip was like a matte black and the rear wing was more of a satin black. Uh, so what I did was once I got the center console, I took all three parts to a paint shop and had them paint and color match it gloss black to the car. Um, other modifications that I did was uh, LED uh, headlights. I did Sylvania H7 uh, LED low beams, uh, H7 3200K 30, 30, uh, high beams just because I love the look of, of like the yellow lighting with the white or blue. Uh, and then the parking lights, I also did a gold or yellowish LED. Um, going around to the car, I also did carbon fiber uh, side mirror cover, so they're just overlays that go over the OEM mirrors. And when I got the car, the car has uh, side scoops that are functional, and on the passenger side, the mesh was missing, and you can't just buy the mesh. So I went to a company called GRP, or Greg's Race Parts, and I ordered uh, these carbon fiber side scoops, and they actually make a wide model, so I did that along with the hardware, which is basically a spacer, and they give you longer bolts um, to kind of support the scoop. But the new scoops come with mesh on them, so uh, they are made to order, and that took about eight to nine weeks to get, but I installed those. Um, if you go around to the back of the car, you'll see that I also did a GRP, or Greg's race parts rear panel delete so when I first got it the car if you're standing behind it and you're looking uh, you know below the taillights and everything you'll see like there are bumperettes uh, that are on the sides of the license plates and then there's like grills on the side of those and then the exhaust actually came out to a center exit exhaust that pointed towards the ground but I actually didn't like the way that that looked aesthetically So what I ended up doing was taking off that exhaust and I, I did the rear panel delete. So the rear panel delete is where you basically remove the rear bumperettes, you remove the grills, and I also remove the center exit exhaust as well. Um, aesthetically speaking, I think it looks really cool or it looks pretty badass when you have the exhaust exposed and you're behind the car. So I swapped out the existing exhaust with an r -Cray muffler um, and because I deleted that rear panel and also the OEM exhaust shield, I also heat wrapped the piping so this way uh, you know, the, it, we could somewhat control the heat that was coming off of the exhaust. Uh, I also got rid of the OEM rear diffuser and swapped it with the Diflo Element 5 rear diffuser. Uh, that also came in a gloss black finish. And I also did the GRP contoured side skirts uh, that just mount right on. So when you order those from GRP, there is an option for you to get a rivet gun and riv nuts that are specific for you know mounting those side skirts and I would highly recommend it. Uh, I didn't do it myself. I actually have a mechanic that works on these cars and they're the ones that actually mounted it for me. So um, that's pretty much for, that's all that I did for the exterior modifications of the car. Um, if you do jump into the inside, you'll see the, obviously the center console that I had color matched. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning, this is a purpose-built car, so it doesn't have cup holders or anything like that. Uh, I found a vendor that actually makes a dual cup holder in like an aluminum finish and uh, I, I did mount those and it just uses OEM mounting points and existing um, bolts to mount that. And uh, that is pretty much everything uh, cosmetically that I've done, both on the exterior and also the interior. Um, there are modifications that are done to the engine, but we can kind of go over that. So after I drove the car home from Ohio, eight hours, the car drove great. Uh, and then I started hearing a rattling sound from the engine, which you know is in the back of the car. So for those who aren't familiar with these cars, it has a 2ZZ from a Toyota Celica GTS. And the cool thing about that is, uh, you know, growing up I love the 7th gen Celicas, right? And uh, 
with the Celica GTS, the engines uh, has, the 2ZZ has a variable valve timing lift intelligence. And the lift is almost like VTEC, Honda's VTEC. So it's a, a cam change and it sounds awesome when you uh, hit that. But the, the difference between an Elise and an Exige from a performance perspective is the Exige is actually supercharged. So when you pop uh, the rear hatch, you can actually see the top mounted intercooler and then the supercharger is actually sitting uh, between like the, the, the cockpit, I guess you could say, in the engine. Um, so there was a rattling noise. I posted a video of the sound on the Lotus page and everyone was very helpful. They said, thankfully, it didn't sound like it was something internal with the car. Um, and I took it to my shop and basically they said that the, uh, I needed a new supercharger pulley. So uh, I also know that um, there is a known failure item in the supercharger. Uh, there's a coupler in there that's, that's known to fail. It's a wear item. And I know that the supercharger services normally do around 50,000 miles, and my car had 47,000. So I, I went to Monkey Wrench Racing, which is a place where they make a lot of parts for Toyotas and Lotus. I mean, you know, it's obviously the Toyota engine in it. Um, and I bought a uh, supercharger service kit, which includes bearings and couplers and fluid. Uh, and also, I talked to the rep and I asked him, um, you know, what the smallest pulley that I can do uh, is to the car uh, without having to retune it. And also, that's safe for, you know, the engine and the supercharger. Actually, on these cars, the engine and the supercharger can handle more boost. It's just the transmission cannot. And I didn't want to have to stress it. So I went with the 3.1 inch pulley from Monkey Wrench Racing and it added another two PSI of boost uh, to the car. So once I did that, I also had an oil change done. I also replaced the engine air filter. Um, and uh, I think the car needed rear pads. So went back to Monkey Wrench Racing and I did the CarboTech rear pads. And uh, you know, that pretty much got the car mechanically solid. That's pretty much everything that I've done to the car, guys. Um, I've had it for maybe about two months now. And uh, I have to say that it is the most raw, an engaging and analog car that I've ever driven. Um, like I said, this is a purpose-built car. So, you know, if, you, if you're more concerned about being comfortable and, uh, you know, having creature features and plush seats and, you know, ice cold AC, stuff like that, I don't really know if this car would be for you, but if you want something that's very raw, very analog, uh, very unique, uh, just in general. I mean, aesthetically speaking, the car looks amazing. The size of this thing, you know, it is very compact and to get in is a process. When you open up the door, there's a pretty big sill that you have, you kind of have to step over and then into, uh, the, the seat that's bolted to the ground. So it is definitely very tight. I wouldn't say this would be my first choice if I were to ever do a road trip or you know a long distance trip. Usually after, when I drove it back home from the night that I got it, uh, it did take, uh, you know, after a couple hours, your back was starting to hurt and you'd have to get out and stretch. But I mean, outside of that, um, it is an extremely fun car. Uh, going into power from the factory, it makes 240 horsepower from the factory, uh, which doesn't sound like a lot. However, the car only weighs 2,000 pounds, so it's basically a street legal go-kart. With the modifications that I've done, I really don't like to guess horsepower, but if I could guess maybe somewhere around 250, 260, I'm not sure. but. Uh, what I love about it is under wide open throttle, you're hearing that supercharger whine, and then, you know, that will take you up into the, in the, the cam change or the vario valve timing lift. So when that lift kicks in, it, 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 it hits like VTEC and it revs out to 8,000 RPM. So um, it's definitely a blast to drive. And actually the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and jump into the car and we'll, we'll go for a ride.
now we're in the car. It is very tight in here. I mean, it's just a very small car in general. It's very compact. So there's really not a lot of room for you and someone else. I mean, if you have you alone, I mean, it's still <laughs> kind of tight. Uh, I'm 5'4", so from a height perspective, I fit in this car completely fine. Um, but if you're, you know, much taller than that, or taller in general, um, it might be a little more challenging for you to fit in here and really not feel crammed. Um, but the driving experience of this car is so fun. I mean, I'm not one to normally take turns super fast and rip it around and things like that, but it's very hard to be in this car and not want to do that because, you know, as I mentioned, it weighs 2,000 pounds and it has 240, maybe 250 horsepower. And um, it's just the right amount of power to be really, really fun. Um, I wouldn't say it's like fast, but I'd say it's pretty quick up until you get out of fourth gear and go into fifth. At the top of fourth, you're around 100 miles an hour. Um, and as you're going into you know fifth gear, you're starting to kind of feel like maybe you've hit a wall. Um, I mean, the car will still pull, but not like it does first through fourth. So, um, let's see, right now I'm in second gear. We're gonna get onto the highway and we're gonna go wide open throttle. Sorry, there was a car. So that was basically third into fourth. Like I said, the car sounds awesome. I don't know if it captures it in the camera, but you can really, really hear the supercharger just screaming. Um, like I said, first through fourth gear, it pulls really nicely. Once you get out of fourth and go into fifth, it doesn't pull quite as hard. But I will say, um, once you get into fifth gear, I mean, you're going into the triple digits, and realistically, you don't want this car going much faster uh, than, you know, say 100 or so, just because it's so light and the front, the front is very light and uh, it, it kind of feels like floaty or something like that at, at, at higher speeds. So I would say that, you know, first through fourth is where you're really going to have the most fun in the car. Um, once you get into fifth, you know, it's it's you know, kind of sketchy, but, um, the car is definitely super, super fun to drive. Um, if you look on the inside, very basic controls. I mean, this is an aftermarket Pioneer head unit. These are your controls for your climate controls. Um, it does have AC. However, uh, when I had it recharged, it started like leaking or something after that. So, I mean, the car doesn't have so basically the car has an ac option but my specific car it's not working and you know thankfully we're going into fall because this summer was very brutal and uh it's really tough to not have that but um just talking about some of the other details that i did on the inside uh the center console when you get them if you don't get it in leather uh it comes in like a gray plastic and uh, obviously I had that painted gloss black. Uh, I also bought a brand new shift boot, uh, which came with like a plastic retaining ring at the base of it. And uh, I also got like the OEM mounting clips that basically it's a U-clip that, that attaches uh, the, the retaining clip that's attached to the boot to the center console. So that is, um, you know, everything is mounted the way that it should that it should have been from the factory. But, uh, here, let's see. We're in second gear right now. We'll just let people drive around. I'll wait for another opening. But driving the car, it's definitely raw. It's very analog. Like I said, there's no power steering. However, you don't really notice it. I mean, the car weighs 2,000 pounds. Um, one of the things that I really, really like about this car um, is, you know, 
it, it is an exotic car, right? I mean, the, the styling of it is exotic. Uh, they're just very uncommon. They are limited production cars. This is one of 69 uh, Exige S's that were made in phantom black. Uh, and that's ever, so that includes, you know, U.S. and, and, and uh, you know, other countries. So there aren't very many of these cars around. And some people that get them, you know, strictly make them track cars, which is completely fine. I mean, that's kind of what it was designed to do anyway. Um, but, you know, as far as, you know, models that, you know, people are just driving on the streets that are clean, you really don't see these cars very often. Um, but I truly enjoy driving it. Um, and, and what I love about it is you have basically an exotic car with kind of standard car consumables. So for example, um, I was having an issue with the starter on this car and uh, I bought it from Monkey Wrench Racing and it's the same starter that's in a Toyota, you know, Corolla XRS or a Toyota Celica GTS or something like that. So the starter itself is only, you know, maybe $100 or, or I'm sorry, $150 or so and that's for a brand new one. Um, and if you didn't care about that, you could even do a remanufactured one for even less. So the, uh, the consumables for this car are definitely relatively inexpensive. Um, also, brakes, you know, sometimes... That was just like full out second gear, a little bit of third, just kind of right into fourth. We're just cruising. What I love about the car is uh, the consumable cloth, right? Because anytime you're getting into a high-end, uncommon or exotic car you know the other part to buying it is maintenance right like the last thing you want to do is buy something that you know you can't afford to maintain um so for me the awesome thing about it is the brakes for this car are you know just regular steel brakes you know it's not some big carbon ceramic you know it's a uh, just a regular steel brake that might cost a few hundred bucks for you know a good pair of rotors and pads you know you don't really need anything super crazy but another cool thing about you know driving this car is uh it has a removable target top so normally there's a trim piece here and a trim piece back there um that you remove and then once once you remove those there's like a torx bit or a torx bolt on all four corners that you undo and then you can lift this top off. Um, I, I will say one of the things that kind of stinks about it is there's nowhere to store it. So if you do take it off, you'll have to either leave it at home or put it down somewhere. But another kind of really cool feature about the Exige is, you know, it has functional arrow, arrow, as I mentioned, you know, the side scoops, but also there's a roof scoop. And if you look in the roof scoop, it goes directly into the top mounted intercooler. It feeds air into that. So very, very functional stuff. But this car is absolutely amazing. I absolutely love it. Let me see, fourth, here's third. And if you want, we'll go wide open throttle. third to fourth the car is such an absolute blast to drive and like i said if you're really into the driving experience you're looking for something raw you're looking for something analog something uncommon and pretty fun to drive i would highly recommend this car to you um, but that's pretty much it for the video guys i hope that you enjoyed it if you enjoyed the content consider subscribing and i'll catch you in the next experience peace